Moving on now, Lieutenant General Michael Correa, U.S. President Joe Biden's pick to be commander of a Central Command, was warned that Al Qaeda and ISIS were reconstituting in a wide-ranging Senate confirming a confirmation hearing on Tuesday in the Taliban-controlled country. Kurila told the Senate Armed Services Committee that threat from reconstituting Al-Qaeda and ISIS in Afghanistan remains a big challenge. He told senators that if confirmed, he would look closely at best options to ensure ISIS-K and Al-Qaeda remain incapable of attacking U.S. from Afghanistan. area is home to nine of the top ten most dangerous violent extremist organizations including Al-Qaeda and ISIS, which are both reconstituting. All of these ill trends are accelerated by water scarcity and food insecurity. China has significantly increased its investment and influence in the region, and Russia acts as a spoiler. If confirmed as the CENTCOM commander, I will protect American interests in the region with these challenges in mind. Now, since the United States troops left Afghanistan after two decades of war, ISIS has stepped up attacks in Afghanistan. Kurila's concerns seem to be echoing the latest report by UN Security Council on activities of the Islamic State and Al-Qaeda. The new UN report revealed that foreign terror groups enjoy more freedom in Afghanistan than in recent years. The report particularly mentioned Al-Qaeda in the Indian subcontinent, the Islamic movement of Uzbekistan. Now, for more perspective on this, joining us live from Islamabad is Vion's Pakistan Bureau Chief, Anas Malik. Anas, thank you for joining us. Like I mentioned, the threat of Al-Qaeda and the ISIS looms large in Afghanistan. What can you tell us about the reconstitution of Al-Qaeda and ISIS? Well, Al-Qaeda has always existed since the fall of Kabul. Uh, their, uh, their fighters have fought alongside the Taliban, so the Taliban are very sceptical or rather wary of taking actions against Al-Qaeda in particular because they fear that uh, the Al-Qaeda fighters who are well-trained and well-equipped and well-armed, uh, they can possibly uh, join the IS as well and uh, uh, strengthen uh, the uh, further military alliance or military opposition against the group which is already facing government troubles. So therefore, uh, the Taliban, what they have been doing is they have not been touching those allied groups or like-minded groups uh, and they have been trying to push them under the rug and at the same time giving them a safe haven as well. Mm. That is what this report has essentially called for as well and it has uh, spotlighted uh, on it as well. We understand that in August last year, uh, following the Taliban takeover, the uh, security chief of Osama bin Laden or former security chief of Osama bin Laden returned to Afghanistan as well. We saw those visuals so this is a clear indication that uh, uh, the Taliban would want to quote uh, quote unquote honor uh, those people or those groups who have uh, supported their uh, fight uh, or this fight to power of uh, struggle to power as one would put it uh, and that is the reason that they would want to continue giving them safe havens regardless of what the Taliban would claim that remains the reality on ground him right now, like I mentioned, Lieutenant General Michael Kurella has confirmed that they are looking at best options. Now, what sort of options and measures are we looking at here? Well, at this point of time, the uh, U.S. has very limited options uh, when it comes to keeping having eyes on Afghanistan, uh, especially with regards to the intelligence spectrum. So uh, their utmost priority would be to have allies on board. Uh, uh, we understand that one of them could be Tajikistan, the other could be Uzbekistan, and of course uh, Pakistan as well, uh, out of the six neighbors that Afghanistan has. These are uh, the three in proximity that suit uh, the U.S. To be, uh, to be natural allies with, or the fact that they have shared a history but uh, their relations with Pakistan have not been ideal most of their emphasis has been on intelligence collection so that any further possible suicide attacks or attacks uh, to uh, uh, inside the United States or that can possibly hamper U US interest that is something that has been the focus uh, and that that is what they are trying to assess or rather uh, rather collect uh, at this point of time they have not had any major success uh, but they hope that they might just be because this is utmost necessary to have an eye in Afghanistan especially with the growing foothold of the IS that has been mentioned in the, in the UN report as well. Um, uh, it says that uh, member states, es 
estimate uh, between 200 to 400 fighters of the IS. But it is pertinent to mention that the Tajik intelligence, as per Imam Mouli Rehmanov, uh, the uh, Tajik president, they estimate the number of fighters between 6,000 to 10,000 of the IS scale. Right. So that remains a cause of concern because IS uh, is a proper or rather is the only military opposition uh, in Taliban rule Afghanistan and that can be a threat to the region at large. Raheem? Right. Anas, just for more clarity on this, you touched on this earlier. The role of Taliban in not limiting and renouncing their activities has been questioned as well. What can you tell us about that? Well, as I said, uh, the Taliban are trying to give a safe haven or protection to those groups or to those allied groups that had helped them uh, to this uh, uh, to this forceful takeover of power uh, or their fight to freedom as what they claim. Uh, and that is the reason they would not want to touch upon those groups. That includes the ETIM, the East uh, Turkestan uh, Islamic Movement, or, which is now rebranded itself as TIP, the Turkish Islamic Party. Uh, again, it's a terror group that is found uh, that used to be found in abundance uh, in Badakhshan along the Wakhan uh, corridor along the Ch uh, China border of Afghanistan. Uh, they have relocated those fighters as well. That's what the, the, that's what the report uh, says as well. Uh, then we're talking about uh, the Al-Qaeda or AQIS, the Al-Qaeda in Indian subcontinent, uh, mm -hmm. its fighters and other uh, like-minded groups such as the TTP as well. Mm -hmm. So Taliban would not want to basically push these fighters uh, as a token of thanks uh, and they uh, they can fear a proper military opposition in case if they push them to the limits because uh, a that's what the code of conduct calls for or the honor within uh, the unsaid uh, rule within the Pashtuns they calls for uh, for keeping a lookout of their guests a or, uh, or giving it back to who, who has uh, supported or facilitated them so that is number one and the other the other uh, important bit it would be that the Taliban are not in a position to act uh, against these groups as well because they already fear the rise of ISIS and in case if these groups go on to merge with ISIS then they would just be much more trouble in time to come. Him? Right. All right, Anas. Thank you so much for joining us with all your inputs on this. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.